35 at that stage had uh, five caribous and four Iroquois when I got posted to it. Um, and the Blackhawk decision had been well and truly made and things were in train and so on. Um, uh, we did the first, the two years that I was the deputy flight commander, uh, 84 and 85, we had the four aircraft. Uh, I arrived there in the January, cyclone season and everything else, and uh, the guy that had been identified as the flight commander was actually still over in the Sinai uh, waiting on promotion and he was going to come back. So I had, I had three months where I was the acting flight commander, or about a month's handover with the guy that left. Uh, so I had a couple of months that, that was there. And, uh, it, was, it was pretty interesting because um, five squadron, nine squadron certainly in the earlier iteration, and five squadron, uh, and Nine Squadron at that stage were both operationally focused and operationally minded. 35 Squadron was pretty much called the North Queensland Aero Club because we, it was fairly relaxed. But the, we had four aircraft, but we didn't have any armour-plated seats. We didn't have any... Uh, we had uh, four machine guns for four aircraft. We only had five or six loadmasters when you need eight to crew properties. The aircraft were there to provide lift for the the um, Townsville based army units but they weren't um, geared or equipped to deliver effective service well I, I had a look and I, I mean Vietnam was still almost fresh in my mind as opposed to most of the other guys who'd had 10 or 12 years where they'd been um, operating in peacetime conditions with a whole lot of different approaches to to uh, rules, regulations, and all sorts of things. And I, I took a look and I said, well, you know, it says in the ASD 235, a secret document at the time, this is what you have to be able to do. So every three months you would write a report called the War Stand, the War Standing. And uh, it was a classified document and you would, you would report on your ability to fulfil the tasks that you had to do. And there in black and smudge was... This is what the helicopter force should be able to do. This is what 35 Squadron should be able to do. All of those things, and in particular, do them in this way, supporting 3rd Brigade and so on. And I had a look and I went, well, well, we can do that, but we can't do that, 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 and that. So I wrote a report and it said basically what I just said. You know, yes, we can do one or two of these things, but the other 10, we actually can't because we don't have the right equipment the right hours, the right training, enough aircraft, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so I took that having, uh, and, and the admino in me made me write that, you know, here's, here's all the bits and pieces. I, you know, I know all about writing reports and pretty good with words. So I took it down to the CEO, who was in fact a bloke off my path course. Uh, one of the navigators, Pete White, so Pinky White. I said, hey, so here's the, here's the wall stand for rotary wing flight. Uh, and he said, I'll just leave it there and back upstairs to my office. And about 10 minutes later, he says, you yeah, fine. You can't write this. And I said, what do you mean? So he said, well, we've been saying we're OK for ages. And I said, well, we're not. And he said, well, what are we going to do? And I said, well, I've already put all the, all the bids in to get everything fixed. And he said, well, let's write that we've identified some shortfalls, but let's not list all the shortfalls just yet. So we did that. We we said we had our problem and, and I put in all the paperwork to try and redress these things and, and it all went away. Anyway, the next time one of these things is due in three months, Lindsay Ward's come out of the desert. He's the new flight commander and he's the squadron leader. I'm still, oh, you know, I'm just the flight lieutenant. And uh, he said, what's this war stand thing? I said, oh, that's a fascinating thing. Here's, here's what you do. You write a report against this and this. And I showed him and I said, now, we can do that and that but we can't do these things. And he said, oh, so what do we say? And I hand him my last report. I said, well, we say something like that. And he went, oh, okay, signed it. Took it down to the CEO. Ten minutes later, what? <laughs> down he goes. That one went from the squadron to the base saying, it went verbatim. The CEO said, because we could quote what we'd done to fix all the things, and uh, um, about six months later, we had uh, still only had four aircraft, but we had 
all the door guns, all the armoured fuel, all the armoured seats to put in them. We had uh, extra pilots and extra crewmen to meet the load so that we'd become operationally capable even though we only had four aircraft. And then as Nine Squadron um, uh, downsized, getting ready for the Blackhawks, we took their aircraft. And uh, in 1985, as the flight commander there, I ended up with all 16 Iroquois under my uh, hand. Uh, and that was uh, very, very uh, gratifying, uh, certainly as a squadron leader. Right, so it, it just required some administrative savvy. Get, I, I, absolutely. the money was obviously there. Uh, look, all of the bits and pieces had always been there. They just hadn't been asked for or distributed. Uh, and, and I guess, uh, I don't know whether it's fortuitous, I don't know whether it's, uh, I, don't, I don't know what the right word is, but I, I rocked up at a time with my background, with uh, operational capabilities and thoughts in my mind about how we would do things. And uh, I, I just said, well, you know, this isn't right. This says we can do these things. We should be able to do these things, and we can't. So we've got to tell people. And, and uh, you know, I mean, uh, I, I don't think anyone beforehand had been uh, deliberately lying. They just hadn't, you know, oh, well, we're here doing what we're supposed to do. We're helping the army. We're doing these things. So we're OK. Uh, and, and in my mind, you know, uh, and uh, if you think about it, the things like Fiji and there were, uh, we did three Fiji standbys while I was at 35 or in three brigade as the Bailo. Uh, we had, we had things going on that meant we needed to be ready. Uh, so uh, it, 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 it all fell into place. Uh, I was pretty happy with that. Uh,